So the fact that you don't use chalk, I find very fascinating. Have you tried? Like, because I feel like it's not only about preventing sweats, but it's also something about the stickiness of the holes. Have you ever tried like a climb with chalk and without chalk and see how much? Oh yeah. How many grades apart? Huge difference. Huge for difference me. for me. Yeah. Huge difference. It's like two, three grades, four. I think four or five. Yeah. What? Yeah. According to Magnus, since he climbs V15 with chalk, he is a V10 climber without chalk. I'm currently a V6 climber without chalk, so if chalk has the same effect on me, I should be climbing V11. Which means me with chalk climbs harder than Magnus without chalk. Obviously, this is impossible. In this video, I will conduct a few experiments to find out how much exactly chalk helps for an average climber like myself. In order for the measurements to be as accurate as possible, I will be doing the measurements on two separate days. One day entirely without chalk, and the other day entirely with chalk. I will attempt this orange V7 without chalk. As expected, I failed. <laughs> so I'll be measuring how many seconds I can hang on a 10 millimeter edge without chalk. Let's do it. Ooh, <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. I'll be hanging on a good old 20 millimeter edge without chalk and see how long I can hang. Let's do it. Oh my, actually pretty tiring. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a while though. Okay, I'm happy with my hang. So now next, we'll hang on this sloper. Based on intuition, sloper is the one that will matter the most with or without chalk. I'll be hanging on the sloper without chalk and see how long I can hang on it. If I didn't hang on the 20 millimeter edge, I could have hanged longer. But you know what, this will be a fair test because on the second day, when I have chalk, it will be the same sequence. So it will be a fair comparison. So I'm gonna attempt to hang on the beast maker. So first on the slope all wide first. I remember I wasn't able to hang on it for even one second before. Maybe things change, but I'm gonna try. Okay, <laughs> I can't. Okay, so. This sloper is too difficult to hang for me at the moment, so without chalk at least. Now I'll hang on this sloper, this should be easier. Oh my god! <laughs> that was difficult, but uh, I was happy I was able to hang on it. The last thing we will be measuring is pinching. We'll be testing our pinching on a 18 pound. Can see how long I can hold on to it. One, two, three, go. Oh my gosh, that's actually pretty tough. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was tough. I haven't pinch trained for a long time and I'm happy that I can actually pinch it quite a while. This is what my hands look like without chalk. Only some residual chalk from the climbs I did when I warm up. That's pretty much it. That's how I climb all the time. And I can't wait to, you know, test the whole thing again with chalk and see how much exactly does chalk help. Does chalk actually help? We'll find out. Today, we are back to the gym with the Magnus Chalk. Magnus personally uses this chalk to climb four to five grades harder. So there's no better chalk than the Magnus for this experiment. So now it's time to test the Magnus Chalk and see if I can see any improvements. All right, so now I'll be climbing my orange V7 project with chalk. 
and see if there's a difference in terms of how long, how far I can get. Oh, that's an improvement, I think. Yeah, Previously, the right hand crimp was very difficult to hold on to without chalk, but now with chalk, it actually feels a lot more solid, so I can actually make moves on it. The next hole is still too far away, so still couldn't get it. And now we'll be hanging on the 10 millimeter with chalk and see how long I can hang on it. So Magnus said we have to get our hands all with chalk, even though it's only the fingertips that will be touching the holes. We'll see what will gonna happen. That feels a little bit longer than the previous one. All right, so I'm gonna hang on good old 20 millimeter edge with chalk and see if there's a difference. Oh. It felt pretty long. I'm not sure if it's longer than the previous attempt without chalk, but I'm happy with the hang <laughs> regardless. All right, so I'll be hanging on the sofa with chalk and see how long I can hang onto it. And I'll make sure that I get the chalk on my entire hand. Based on my intuition, this chalk should do wonders on the sofa. I feel like I could have hang a bit longer if I didn't hang on the 20 millimeter. So again, same sequence, so fair comparison. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to hang on the Beastmaker Sloper on the side again and see if I can actually do it this time because I remember last time I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> it's still too hard for me. Okay, so even with chalk, I still isn't able to hang on the side. So next, I'll hang on the middle sloper. I'm gonna get my hands with full of chalk. Take a oh. oh my god. Oh my god. That hurts. Yeah, so for some reason, you know, I started to feel a little bit of swing and I, I kinda, you know, it swings, it swings, and then it's like a, a sloper, so it's really hard to catch myself. So the last thing we'll measure with chalk is pinching. So again, like last time, we'll be pinching 18 pounds on the fictitious portable board and see how long I can pinch onto it. Oh my God. Okay, that, that feels pretty long. I'm not sure if it's longer than last time, but regardless, I'm happy with how long I can pinch onto it. So I'm gonna go back and check the footage and see how much I improve or even like regress. And we'll do a summary for you guys. Based on the results of the tests, it seems that using chalk does help someone like me who doesn't sweat. Although it doesn't help me as much as it helps Magnus. The only test in which I regressed is the Beastmaker Middle Sloper. And my guess is it's because I put too much chalk on my hand, which actually made the surface feel more slippery. Therefore, I swung and popped off the handboard even though I was trying hard not to. Another surprising finding is that the most improvement I got isn't in the slopers and nor in the pinches and the larger 20mm edge. It's actually in the smaller 10 millimeter edge. It was also my first time being able to hold on to the right cream solidly that feels around 10 millimeter ish and being able to make a decent attempt with the big left. I guess that explains why high level climbers like Magnus feel chalk is essential because these kinds of small creams only appear in higher level climbs. In any case, I understand these tests aren't super scientific and there are a lot of variables. The subject is equal to one and maybe my body was simply in a better state on the second day. Or maybe I simply subconsciously went harder on the second day because my mind assumed chalk should help. 
The conclusion is that I can't say for sure whether chalk is 100% helpful, but I can say that there's a high probability that chalk helps in climbing. Thanks for watching. I'm not sponsored by Magnus, nor do I receive any commission from Magnus for this video. After I met Magnus in person, I dug out my old chalk that I brought to America 12 years ago and tried climbing with it. But my skin cracked after using it, so I stopped using it and went back to my old ways of climbing without chalk. I was hoping that mag dust wouldn't crack my skin. But unfortunately, it also did. I decided not to climb with chalk in the near term again. Mainly because grade chasing is not the top priority in my life at the moment, and the skin cracks affects my day job since it stings when I type on the keyboard. However, if you don't have dry skin and grade chasing is your top priority in life, you should definitely consider climbing with chalk if you haven't yet. Check out the link in the video description below to find out more about MagDust. See you in the next video.